Good morning. Good, good morning. I'm so used to saying that every Sunday morning. <laughs> Carrie Pearson, you can find a seat down here. Good evening. Happy Christmas Eve. Only a few more hours until you're snug in your beds and hopefully sound asleep. Who's gonna wake up? Who's gonna wake up the earliest tomorrow? <laughs> Meredith, Pip, you're not even going to sleep. Why? Why even bother sleeping? Why even bother? What time are you waking up, Pearson? I'm gonna get today at like one o'clock. One o'clock in the morning or one o'clock in the afternoon? In the morning. Oh my word! Pearson might win for the earliest wake up tomorrow. Sorry, mom and dad. <laughs> And some of you grown-ups out there, this used to be you. This used to be you who could hardly wait until that Christmas morning. And you woke, you woke up your grown-ups, right? You wake up the grown-ups, and the grown-ups say, go back to bed. <laughs> but before we get all snug in there our beds, I want to share with you one story. And this is a story about a boy named Charles. And Charles was born in 1924, which was a very, very long time ago. And Charles was the youngest of 10 children. That's a lot of kids. And while his home was full of laughter and joy and happiness, it didn't have much else because mom and dad didn't have much money for really anything. In fact, Charles could not remember the last time he received a Christmas gift. It was hard enough for the family to put food on the table, so Christmas gifts were completely out of the, out of the question. But something, did spe that something special did happen every Christmas Eve. Every Christmas Eve, the neighbor would come over and bring an orange for every single one of the kids. And if you've never had a gift, and if food is kind of hard to come by, that orange would be so special. And Charles could remember every, every Christmas Eve, he could remember how that felt to like take that first bite into that orange and that wonderful juice just going down his throat in that tangy, tangy, wonderful orange flavor and scent. He remembers it every Christmas Eve. And so he looked forward to his neighbor coming over every Christmas. Well, this Christmas was no different. It was Christmas Eve and the neighbor knock, 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 knocked on the door. And what did he have? A bag of oranges. Now, Charles being the youngest of all the kids, well, they kind of were pushing and shoving. You guys don't know anything about pushing and shoving, do you? No, you would never do that to be the first to receive something before your brother and sister. Never. But they pushed and they shoved. And of course, him being the youngest, he got put to the back of the line. And so he could already smell the oranges as his brothers and sisters ripped open their oranges. And Charles was just sitting there thinking, hmm, should I just bite into my orange? Should I peel it? Should I like take a wedge and eat a few tonight and then save some for tomorrow? What should I do? Well, he was, he was waiting for his orange and he's sitting there thinking. And then he happens to look at his neighbor and his neighbor's face went from smiling to sad. What happened? He ran out of oranges, and Charles did not receive an orange. And before the neighbor could either apologize or explain what happened, he ran to his bedroom, threw himself on his bed, and sobbed the hardest, deepest, heaviest cry because he knew he was not going to get an orange. That would be so terrible. And he, you know, he was crying so hard that he never felt the tap on his shoulder. It was that smell of an orange that kind of made him stop crying and lift up his head. And then he saw his sister standing next to his bed with her hand out with oranges from every single one of her brothers and sisters. They each gave him one little orange wedge and they made up the most beautiful, perfect orange to give to Charles. Oh, isn't that the most wonderful thing? Well, 
I think that that can remind us that each one of those slices were so very, very important and loved by those brothers and sisters. But that's the spirit of Christmas. It's giving what we value and love to one another. Just like God gave his son Jesus to be born, he gave what he loved. He gave his son Jesus to be born on Christmas, and that is the spirit of Christmas. That when we share what we love, when we share with all the people in the world, not just today and not just on Christmas Day, but on every day, we can make the biggest difference in this world. We can make this world a more loving, caring, compassionate, inclusive, kind place. And so today, I want you to remember that orange. And tomorrow, I want you to remember that orange. And the next day, I want you to remember that orange. That when you see an orange, I want you to think about the spirit of Christmas, the spirit of sharing the things that we love and our, we value with the people around us. Now, usually on a Sunday morning, you guys go racing out of here and you run upstairs. Today, we are going to stay in the service, so head back quietly and carefully to your seat.